This is lesson number 14 for metal technology. It's over welding. You're going to be looking at chapters 19 and 20 in your book. It's from pages 289 to 313. If you need to stop the video for any reason to fill in the rest of your key terms, your definitions, or images, anything along those lines, feel free to do so. Watch it as many times as you need. And as always, don't uh, hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. So we talk about welding. Welding is a big portion of metals and metal technology. Welding is the joining of metals. So you it's heating metals to a suitable temperature where they melt and fuse together. So when you fuse metal together it is permanent. Welding is a permanent fastening technique. It means it cannot be undone or broken unless the uh, actual weld itself is damaged so you don't want to damage the project the person up on the top right of your screen is performing a welding operation so this guy up here you can see that he has his mask on and you can see all of the sparks and stuff that are going to come out this particular type of welding is something called a MIG welding process MIG is an acronym for metal inert gas we have one MIG welder in our room here at school and we have four arc welders and five gas welding stations. The arc welding and the MIG welding stations are going to use the same type of a helmet. Gas welding is going to be more like this one down here. This is where you're going to use the torch. So you're going to have to apply your heat through the torch. On MIG welding and arc welding the heat is provided through electricity gas welding it is not it is provided through a flame so we're going to use an oxyacetylene system to provide heat to our project so we can melt the two pieces of metal together and form one so gas welding is a group of welding processes that make use of burning gases to produce the heat required to melt and fuse the metal the gas cylinders these guys over here, this is the oxygen cylinder and this is the acetylene cylinder, A-C-E-T-Y-L-E-N-E. -E. These things are uh, do have your gauges on here. They are going to tell you what type of pressure is in your tank and what's going into your system. Um, you always want to make sure that you're checking your gauges before you start the welding process. So the gas cylinders are containers that serve as supply source for high pressure gases used in welding. Again, the acetylene, this label right here is typically going to be on your bottle. Acetylene, the main thing that you need to understand for acetylene is that it is unstable above 15 pounds per square inch. So this is regulated pressure. 15 PSI, this is extremely, extremely, extremely important to us. You need to make sure that if you are ever uh, going to light your torch, that the very first thing that you check is that the gauge is not above 15 psi we are going to run our gauges and our pressure down around six pounds at the primary station and then three at each individual torch so again 15 psi is unstable the acetylene could explode if you try to light it at that regulated pressure the oxygen compressed oxygen is the green bottle that's the one that has all the pressure in it if we get that pulled over or knocked over, all that pressure wants to come out at once. So we want to make absolutely sure that not only our oxygen tank is chained up, but also our acetylene tank as well. So when we put oxygen into our torch, it's going to increase the temperature of the flame. So it's much like adding air to charcoal when it's burning or a fire. If you've ever seen anybody put a fan by a fire or anything like that you, you can see the coals getting brighter that's because you're adding oxygen um, we are using a very clean compressed oxygen so when we add this to our torch the torch tip is going to turn from an orange flame to a nice blue flame the pressure regulators as we see over here in this middle picture the pressure regulators are going to tell us exactly what type of uh, or what amount of gas is coming out into our system so on the pressure regulators it's actually this part here 
It's not this. These are the gauges. The gauges are going to tell you what the regulator is doing. So the way the regulator works is this handle right here, you can turn it to the right. And as you turn it to the right, it's going to push the spring in farther, which is going to let more gas out. If you turn it to the left, you're unscrewing it. It's going to um, pull this mechanism back out and there's not going to be as much gas that's going to pull through. So this is kind of similar to the accelerator uh, pedal on a car. The farther you push it down, the more gas you put into the system or into the engine. This one, the farther you screw it in, the more gas you're putting out into the system. Gas is going to be put out into a welding torch. This torch right here, it's very grainy on this picture, but you can see that there are two different knobs. The knobs are going to correspond to the different gases. You're going to have, again, oxygen on one and acetylene on the other. When you mix the, the two gases, they'll come out from this area in here, and then a flame is obviously going to come out from the bottom here. You never, ever, ever light the torch with both gases on. You will only light the acetylene gas first. So when you light the acetylene gas first, you're going to get a nice flame. So when your flame comes out, then you will add your oxygen to that later. When you add the oxygen, you want to get to what's called a neutral flame, which is what we'll talk about here in just a few slides. When you adjust your torch, you're going to have different types of flames. And as you see pictured over here on the right, this first flame is what we call a carburizing flame or a reducing flame. So we've got, um, we've got too much fuel or acetylene in this case. So what we're looking at is we're looking at our internal cone. So the internal cone here is what we are looking at when we are adjusting our flames. This is where it gets the name carburizing flame. This one is an oxidizing flame. So this one down here has too much oxygen in it. You see it's kind of difficult to see but the actual oxygen, uh, excuse me, the actual internal cone here is really 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 sharp pointed. So you have too much oxygen in your system. You're going to have an excess, you're going to have more of a rushing sound. The one that you're looking for, the one that you want to try to achieve is something called a neutral flame. So a neutral flame has a correct mixture of oxygen and acetylene. So this one has a nice sharp internal cone and then you have the external flame. So this cone right here comes to a decent point. It's not really, really small like this one here, and it's not elongated like this one here. Neutral flame, again, correct mixture of oxygen and acetylene. The weld pool is what you're going to be looking at. See how the arrow up here is pointing to this. It's molten metal. So at this point right now, the metal is so hot that it's molten. This thing here is a picture of an electrode. So this is what it's going to actually melt and uh, perform what we call a weld bead. So the weld pool is a portion of the weld that's molten due to the heat of the welding. You want to watch this puddle as you're welding. You don't want to watch the light. You don't want to worry about how bright the light is because the light's going to be very distracting. You, the trick to uh, welding is to watch this puddle. Make sure it's uniform all the way throughout. So again this process is arc welding. This is an example of an arc welding electrode. It's difficult to read here but this is a cartoon version of this. So here would be the actual weld bead that you are seeing up here and this is the electrode that's this thing. This is the work piece. This is what is actually being welded. So we are using electric current to join the metal together. This thing, again, the electrode is held by this. This is either called the electrode holder or the stinger. So the most common name for it is an electrode holder, but a lot of people call it a stinger as well. So this is much like the um, 
a set of jumper cables would probably be the best comparison. You'll squeeze this trigger down here and as you do that it opens this jaw up. So when you open the jaw up you would then take your electrode, you would clamp it in here and then uh, with the ground strap attached to your project you would then touch a project and it's going to arc and start welding. This is the ground strap or ground clamp. So again, this looks like a jumper cable. This has to be connected to your metal. Otherwise, the circuit will not be complete. It would be like the old Christmas lights that when one bulb would go out, nothing would work. If you do not have that circuit completed, this will not work. So it uh, works like a series circuit. So the ground strap has to be connected to whatever metal it is you're welding and then your project will uh, be able to be welded because the circuit will be complete. These are electrodes. These are just examples of different electrodes. They are different colors and they have numbers. The numbers are the most important part of the electrode. So on these electrodes right here you're going to have numbers like E6013, E7018. Um, all of these different numbers mean a diff have a difference in their composition and their strength and they also tell you what position you can weld in. Spattering is going to occur very often in the arc welding and MIG welding process. All of these little brown marks are spatter and all that is is when the electrode is heated up it's melting and it, it's it's an aggressive type of a melt and what happens is the metal will kind of spray out so sometimes you're going to see these little sparks flying all over the place these sparks can be really really dangerous if they fall onto your uh, if they fall onto your shoes or if you get them into the cuffs on your pants they can be really 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 dangerous so you need to make sure that you're welding in an area that uh, it's okay if the sparks are flying around so definitely a uh, well ventilated area but also an area that does not have a lot of uh, flammable material or anything like that so to wrap up this lesson we need to ask ourselves why is welding done over other fastening techniques so this should be a pretty relatively uh, straightforward answer but we need to know why welding is done over other techniques. 